And hello again, this is Sandy McVeigh with another really fun Microsoft tip. Today we're going to do Microsoft PowerPoint creating your own graphics. A lot of people don't realize that you can save your PowerPoint slideshows or your slides as images. So whether you want them for your website or on your um, publications or anything like that, you can make your own graphics. There are some wonderful tools in here uh, called Subtract Shapes, Union Shapes, and then you'll save your file as an image. So let's get started. So here's just a plain old PowerPoint. I've opened it up and I'm going to take a look at this quick access toolbar. If you don't use the quick access toolbar, you should. Uh, this is a great little tool to keep everything you need handy and it also has access to tools that there weren't room to fit in any of the ribbons. So what I'm going to do first of all is show this below the ribbon that moves the quick access toolbar right here in between the ribbon and my workspace so that it's nice and close. I'm going to click the drop down again and I'm going to choose more commands. This will show me a window of everything that I could possibly add to the toolbar as far as popular commands. But what I'm going to show you isn't even a popular command but it is a really cool one. So I'm going to switch from popular commands to all commands, but I could also do commands not in a ribbon because it's not in a ribbon. And I'm going to scroll down here and it's all alphabetized. You can see there are hundreds, probably thousands. I haven't had the time to count them. And I'm going to look for subtract shapes. So I'm going to come all the way down here and keep going. Okay, subtract shape the first one I'm going to send over to my uh, quick access toolbar and then the other one is union shapes and I'll demonstrate just how easy it is to use it this way. So I've added them to my quick access toolbar. If I wanted to put this in a different order, here's how I could reorder them so that redo is in front of save. It's all a preference thing and I will click OK. So now my quick access toolbar has those commands on it. I'm going to go to the insert tab to open the insert ribbon and find the shapes. Now for something that's already on the ribbon you can right click at any time and add that tool to your quick access toolbar just like that. So now I never have to come back to the insert ribbon for shapes if I don't want to. And I'm going to just go ahead and just show only the tabs and not all the ribbons so we can focus on this quick access toolbar. So the first thing I'm going to do is come and get a shape. And you've all done that. I'm going to draw a circle. Circles are nice. Okay. And then I'm going to get another shape. And I'll do a triangle. Okay. You've all done that. Here's the rotate tool. I'm sure you're familiar with that. That lets you rotate it. You can resize it from the corners. You can change perspective if you'd like. And I will go ahead and uh, right click change the fill on that to a yellow color just so you can see that. That is overlapping. So now if I were to join these two shapes together, I'm going to click on one shape and click on the second shape and just choose um, the union shapes. And so it picks up whatever color uh, of the object that I clicked on first, which was the orange. So if I undo this, and I were to click on the blue circle first, and then hold down shift and get the orange cone and union that way, then it all becomes blue. But now it's all one shape. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's just go back in here, and for fun, I'm going to grab a little star. So here's the star. I'm just going to grab that. I'll right click on that, and I'll change the fill. I'll just make that yellow, just because I can. Alright, and I'm going to go and get one more shape. And this is going to be a lightning bolt this time. So I'm going to grab the lightning bolt. And so this is, again, sensitive to what you click first. Okay. So if I click my big image first, hold down the shift and click in my lightning bolt, and choose subtract, you'll see that cuts that lightning bolt right out of that circle. Now I have a really kind of unique shape that you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else, and I'm on my way to making my custom graphic. Uh, if I did it the other way, let me just 
to show you that because you'll probably screw up and that's okay. That's what the undo button is for. So if I click my lightning bu bolt first and then my circle and chose subtract, you'll see it gets rid of everything that intersected uh, that lightning bolt except what was sticking out from behind the circle. So you want to make sure that you click them in the right order when you're unioning and subtracting. So the last thing we'll do is we'll add a little text box. You can say tell someone. So if you like this technique, you can tell someone about it. And I will just bring back that toolbar. That way I can you know, add a little bit of effect to this text. You like to transform. look like. Kind of bigger. So that's sort of his little mouth coming out of here, right? All right. So let's say you want this to be your logo. Okay. Um, the one thing about uh, PowerPoint is that you're going to want to design with your final logo size in mind. So one of the things that we're going to do is uh, customize so what we're going to do is we're going to change this slide size depending on the version of PowerPoint that you're using and your ribbon layout. This might be right out on the design ribbon or it might be underneath this little drop down. So if we go to slide size, you'll see right now I'm at standard 4x3. So I'm going to go to the custom slide size. So that's 10 inches by 7.5 inches. It's really huge as far as an image would go. Uh, so I'm going to say it's two and a half inches, and I'll say by one and a half inches. I'll click OK. I'm going to say uh, ensure fit. So you'll see that my little thing is now smaller, uh, and I can zoom up on it around all of them. So if I drag a square over all of them on the home ribbon and in the arrange group. And I can group those together. And so now they're grouped. I can resize them all at one time. And I didn't even intend to make a face, but this is kind of cute. Uh, if I wasn't crazy with that, tell someone I could just change it. But this is just an example. I'm not going to use this anywhere. There will be a white background or a colored background if you save it as a JPEG and even a GIF. Uh, if you want it to have a transparent background, you're going to have to go into another program like Paint or Photoshop to take that away. But we're happy with the JPEG right now. So now I'll say File and I'll Save As. And I'll just choose my desktop because that's what we all do, right? And you just put it on the desktop. And so you're going to call it your logo. Now, so this is a PowerPoint presentation still. And we want to do that because invariably you're going to want to make changes to your logo after you, um, you know, are done exporting it, you have other people look at it, you come up with other ideas. And if you save it as an image, you're not going to be able to change it. So then, after you have saved it as your PowerPoint ty um, type, you're going to just save again. Okay. Only this time, you're going to change, save the file type. Notice all these different file types that you can save it to. And we're going to come down here, and there's a GIF, a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF. And you can choose whatever works best for you. Uh, JPEGs are pretty universal, so are GIFs. And PNGs work uh, very well as well. So for today, I'm just going to choose a JPEG. I'm still going to keep it the same name of logo. And, I'll click save. and it'll ask you all slides in your presentation or just this one. So this gives you the advantage that if you were doing something that you wanted to have sort of a nice, uh, consistent look throughout your document, you could make it in PowerPoint and then save them all out at one time. I'm just going to do this one slide. So now I have two files, both called logo. And if I were to click on the PowerPoint one, I have the file I was just working on. And if I click on the logo, it opens up in whatever image reader that you have. And there it is. So if you like this video or there's anything else you'd like to know about Microsoft products, drop me a line. My website is www.sandymcveigh.com. Have a great day.